Hey guys, and welcome to Foxhole. This is five top tips for Foxhole in 2021. Number one, learn how to rotate your camera correctly. So, by pressing the middle mouse button in game, you can rotate your camera 360 degrees, which is awesome. But also, what the game doesn't tell you is that you should utilize the top left hand side of your monitor or the top right hand side of your monitor when looking at enemies. So, here we have our gun, our pistol reloaded. And we look, and we point to the left, and we point to the right, and we can see, we can see a lot more. If you were to try and shoot, uh, try and point to enemies below, you can see we can only see up to the sandbag right now, right at the bottom of my screen. Okay, but if I was to rotate around and then look this way, you can see I can see lo loads further when I point to this direction, much further. So always have, whenever you're like attacking enemies, always have them at the top left or top right hand side of your monitor, and use that middle mouse button to rotate around to get that angle. Number two. Vehicle basics. So when you first get yourself a vehicle in Foxhole, what you want to make sure is that your vehicle has got fuel in it. So normally when you get your uh, vehicle for the first time, it'll come with a very small amount of diesel. Now, to fill it up, generally you want to find yourself an oil tanker nearby and then you press E on your vehicle and then click refuel diesel. Then you'll see like a little pump go from the oil tanker into your vehicle and you'll see it slowly start to fill up like so okay if there are no oil tankers around you can manually um fill up your vehicle by going to a refinery you jump out you go up to it you press e to access the refinery and then you click on a can of diesel you will assemble a can of diesel and then press tab on your keyboard and then you want to equip the diesel so you can use it, use it by clicking it there. And then you press the 3 on your keyboard to access to bring it out. And then you go up to your vehicle and you right and left mouse click together to then fill up your vehicle. That is another way to fill up your vehicle. There we go. And then we just deposit the can back in there so someone else can use it. The other awesome thing that you need to know, guys, when you're ever you're driving around with vehicles is that you need to lock your vehicles, right? Because other, otherwise, people will steal your vehicles and uh, you'll lose all the supplies in that vehicle that you were using. So to easily do that, all you need to do is just press the L key on your keyboard. And you can tell you've locked your vehicle because you'll hear that sound, a padlock locking. And you'll also see a padlock symbol below your compass on the top right hand side of your monitor. If, if you haven't got that symbol up there, your vehicle is not locked. So guys, you can still access the inventory of the vehicle while it is locked, as I'll now indicate. So you just come up to the vehicle, you have to... Be, yep, to access the inventory of the vehicle, you have to go up to the passenger side or the driver's side. You go press up to there, you press E. Here we have the inventory of the vehicle. If we want to unlock the vehicle, you can do so from this menu as well. Unlock and then relock. You can also, outside the vehicle, again, have to be by the passenger seat or the driver's seat, you can press L to unlock it and relock it. As well as being inside the vehicle, you can unlock and relock however if you are in the passenger seat you are unable to lock and relock the vehicle have to be in the driver's seat to lock and unlock the vehicle so guys one more thing that you want to know about your vehicles is your fuel gauge you can see your fuel gauge at the top left hand side of your monitor here you can see here at the moment as we're driving along this white bar is decreasing and that tells you that we are utilizing fuel when it gets to around about 20 percent that is probably when you should be going back to a refinery to get more fuel or find an oil tanker and refuel um, at that location. And guys, you can check how much fuel you have by jumping out of the vehicle, pressing E, and you can see it indicated here. Number three, combat stances and recoil. So in Foxhole, you have three different stances in Foxhole. You can stand up, you can crouch, and you can go prone. So again, if you were to unprone, you press X, to stand back up, C to crouch, X to prone, and there we go. Okay, so pay attention to weapon stability. If you stay absolutely still, your weapon stability is going to be very accurate. But as soon as I start to move, you can see my reticule at the end of my white line begin to increase. And as I stay still, the weapon stability increases. And that means you're going to have a much more accurate shot. Okay, so if I was to move around and try and shoot this target here... You can see my shots aren't very accurate. But if I was to stay absolutely still and get the shot off, like so, I'd be I'd be accurate and hit the target. Now, be, crouching helps with, with shortening that time it takes for your reticule to increase back down. So if I was to shoot from standing position, you can see it takes a lot longer for the reticule to shrink, right? Back down to an accurate shot. And if I go prone... 
you'll see that it's much faster. Pay attention to the graph on the left-hand side for weapon stability, okay? So I'll just do this again. So proning shots. Pay attention to the graph and my reticule. Quick reload. Quick reload. Let me stand up for crouch. Takes a bit longer. And standing up. Much longer. Okay? So there you have it. But I also would recommend, if you're prone, it is because it's very hard for you to dodge things like grenades because to, to get up quickly, you have, you have to press X. Your soldier, has, you know, he doesn't like get up and move. He, he, has to st he has to get up on the spot and then then he's able to move once he's finally standing up, right? So you can't just get up and move straight away. You have to wait for your soldier to get up. So I recommend if you are in an area with a lot of grenades being thrown, make sure that you're, you're using crouch stance and then you're ready, you know, you can crouch and then you can push and press C and then you can start, you can move real fast to avoid it. Okay. Also with Fog Soul, standing still and being an obvious target in close quarters combat is not a good idea. What you want to be doing, if you're in very close quarters combat like I am to this guy here, is you want to be just taking pot shots and just keep dodging and doing what's called shadow dancing. Taking quick, quick shots like that. Because the closer you are to a target, the more accurate your shot's going to be anyway, regardless if you're standing up crouched or prone, right? So make sure to use these tips when you are fighting your opponents. Number four, checking your map for intelligence. To check your map, press the M key on your keyboard like so. You might be confused by looking at all the things that the map has to offer. You can, press, you can scroll out to zoom in to get a whole picture of the world map and its current state. We're currently in a massive war at the moment. As you can see, the ones are winning just slightly, uh, but the colonials are pushing back. But let's get into the nitty gritty of the map and why you should be checking it. So, let's zoom into where we are at the moment. Pay attention to the key on the left hand side. You can list different things. You can turn off bases, resources, structures, locations, map posts, region, zones, and intelligence. Infantry are indicated by little dots, little circles. So you've got green, obviously, for colonials, and blue for wardens. So you can see here, we've got little blue dots running around the place here. We've also got vehicles, with integrated by triangles. You can see here, you've got blue dots inside triangles, which is an indication of people driving around certain vehicles in the area. So here, guys, we can also see we have lots of defences indicated by this symbol here. We don't know what type of defence they are currently in the game. Um, but you can see here that we've built up a long line all the way down this coastline to stop a naval invasion from happening. Okay. You can see we've got uh, defences built along the road here as well. So you get an idea of where we've got defences and where we don't have defences. So you can see we've got like strong fortifications in, in, in certain areas and weak in others where we don't have any. We've also got these towers here. Okay. These are a unique symbol. And you can see you've got this white circumference around it. Basically, anything that, is, that comes inside that, enemy vehicle, our vehicles, you know, friendlies, infantry, whatever, they'll ping on this radio, right? Uh, however, if you haven't got radio coverage, this would be like a dark zone like this where you can't see anything. So enemies could be in this area, but we wouldn't know that because they're not on radio co uh, coverage. So if we scroll back down to, for instance, Twelfth the Watch Post, we can see the enemies in this area, right? Because we've got radio coverage of this little of, of this area here but we know the enemy probably got a really big base over here but we haven't got radio coverage as we have their towers in that area right we also can see here that two colonials have been able to flank around the side to go around into this relic base of evil eye so i uh, if no friendlies have noticed this what i would do is i would probably put a map post down here and saying uh, enemy flanking so friendlies are notified um that this is a weak spot then people might not realize this so if you notice something just press right mouse button uh, and then add a post and you can just delete it you know like that if you don't like it you can also upvote other people's po uh, posts here so you can say like this like upvote this this is a you know someone's saying this is a front line so we can upvote that so it helps new people to, to locate the front you can see here tank push someone's not, uh, upvoted that and we can tell these are tanks because there's quite a few green dots there in in that those triangles there so that uh, a sign that they, they're probably tanks there so we want to notify our team that there's a big tank push probably having it happening at the border there okay um howitzers are indicated by these other these, these symbols here as you can see we've got a couple of howitzers in this area and outposts are indicated by these little squares now outposts um you know the green ones we'll, we'll see and that'll be an indication of colonial ba a colonial base for instance that they might have in the area uh if i were to zoom out maybe let's see if we can find one here we go so we can see they've got two outposts here right on the on the um on the coastline 
I think we were able to see this briefly because we had maybe had a tower in the area, or maybe someone went in with a, a radio vehicle. And uh, and we can tell they are landing ships because they're in the sea, right? You can't build uh, defense, you know, uh, fobs like this and encampments and bunker bases out there in the sea. So we know the enemy have two landing ships, and, and also there's a marker there to indicate that people have spout scouted that, and, and now we've got, you know, and everyone's upvoted that to say, yes, we confirm this intelligence, basically. Okay? Also, guys, it's very important when you're looking at your map to if you want to bring say you're doing logistics or you uh you know trying to bring some supplies down to the front line you want to help out you could go to your map and then you would hover over the stockpile over a certain front line town or, or location like a safe house and you can see um what what supplies are in that that building and here we can see they're lacking they're, they're running low on shirts there so maybe it might be a good idea to bring down some shirts basic materials are kind of low there you always want to have at least two thousand basic materials i would say on a front line uh, constantly because you're always going to be building stuff up repairing things um so beam mats are always very important to bring to the front line so by hovering over the front line here on, on these important locations we can see what, what we what we have and what we lack uh, when it comes to uh holding and defending a front line so this will allow you to take that into consideration and bring down what is needed to update your intelligence to have it up to date if you've got a radio on you like so to get one you go to a town hall or any kind of fob or location you can you can equip a radio by assembling one here. You've already assembled one, and then you just press tab and you click it into your radio slot like so. And then from every five seconds then on after, your map will automatically update. So pay attention into this area here. You can see that all these like people moving around is slowly updating as they're going about their business. Okay. You can see this a bit more clearly on a on a major front line down here. For instance, we can see that the colonials are pushing uh, to the watch post. And you can see that every five seconds or so, um, you know, you can see people go backwards and forwards. You can see, you know, this is a, a big contested front line. So the reason why you should always be checking your map and having a radio with you is to see enemy movements and see friendly movements. To, so you know where is safe, where is not safe, and where reinforcements may be needed. So guys, to update your intelligence, if you don't have a radio, just come up to a base and press E. And it should tell you on the left-hand side that your map intelligence has been updated like that, okay? So, you can do this at a town hall, a bunker base like this, a relic base like this, a landing ship, a safe house like this one here, a border base like this one, or a FOB, a Ford Operation Base. And number five, don't stand in the middle of roads. You'll get run over. Off the fucking road, meet back! <laughs> Instead, always run along the sides of roads, so you avoid getting yourself run over, and then or, or wait for a vehicle to pass if you have to cross the road, and then proceed to keep running along the side of the road. If you do run down the middle of a road, don't be surprised to get run over. People can't stop in time if they're if they're driving at full speed. Okay, really easy to follow, and that's the end of the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed this, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Hi lads, thanks for watching that video. If you want more content. Click up here or click over here to click on other content. But make sure to click on that middle button to subscribe to the channel. Okay, and uh, I stream every single day on twitch.tv forward slash helping hands. Catch you in the next one, guys. Take care.